Welcome to the Shine Shine and Geek <laughs> the Shine Geek and Fast Fret podcast. Done. Well done. Okay, we're gonna use that. <laughs> Welcome to the Sean Geek and Fast Fret Podcast with me, your host, Sean Geek, doing a solo episode tonight because we wanted to do something special, do something a little bit different, do something different than the norm. We were going to revisit, as you can hear the streaming sounds of the hype from Cyberlove, my old band. Let's stop that, though. So what I wanted to do tonight, we just did an interview uh, for Witch Police Radio with a band called Pine Commentary. And during the discussions with the band, we discussed a whole bunch of different music, how they had such a Winnipeg sound. And I was trying to define Winnipeg sound and what it exactly was. And I spent two hours, or actually probably more than that, comprising a set list to play for you today with bands that I find defined find (laughs) define the winnipeg sound so basically so basically what i was trying to find was bands that when i moved here to winnipeg in the time that i moved here in winnipeg which was 90 91 around that time and the first place i went to i heard a band and i'm like holy shit what the fuck is this and i wanted to encapsulate that in an episode that i'm going to send a blind commentary Line commentary and basically tell them, hey, this is the Winnipeg sound, or this is what I define as the Winnipeg sound. And I'm very curious if our friend, which police radio, Sam Thompson, will agree with these things or if he remembers any of these bands. So this will be a test of his knowledge of Winnipeg music, and let's see how that goes. So brought this up in an episode before, so I think we're going to start there. My first introduction to Winnipeg music was when I moved here, not the only one. It was cold. Beginning, uh, I moved here in, I think it was like January, December, January, December, somewhere thereabouts. And um, I just finished university in Montreal and I moved here. And when I was in Montreal, I I discovered a whole bunch of new music, which we covered on an episode uh, way back on another episode of Breaking. Um, I would discuss the Pixies and, and, and bands like that. And when they came here with a new appreciation for everything that was outside of the music I had been listening to previous to Montreal, I, um, I, I was, my brain was just open to have some stuff in there and let me hear what, what music is out there that I've been ignoring this and this entire time. So the first instance of hearing anything related to Winnipeg music from my introduction to what the music could sound like here was a band called the Blue Meanies, or they were called the Blue Meanies at the time. And um, what I'd found was that um, <laughs> I guess what I'd found was I was I was stumbling around what I considered to be downtown Winnipeg. Um, it wasn't, in fact, downtown Winnipeg. It was, in fact, um, it was, in fact, um, around the area of the Spectrum Cabaret, which later uh, changed names. Um, but anyway, um, I was walking around the street. I heard music, stumbled into this nightclub, which is now called Pyramid Cabaret. It was called Spectrum at the time. And I'm like, what the hell is that? So I went to the door. I paid the, you know, $5 and $10 to get in. And I walked in and heard this. You guys ready for this? To get 
get yourself ahead Trust in somebody can easily be misled Take my conversation, turn it upside down My fire's waiting, girl, you're wearing a frown And it's a cloudy zone Music on the radio, boxed in conversation And I wasn't there at all So can you imagine walking into a a club first time and when I was of age, because I just turned, uh, I guess I just turned 18, I guess, or they around some, I don't know, somewhere thereabouts. And I came in and I see these guys on stage and they're fucking grooving. They're just kind of, you know, dancing. Just like never heard a band play something that had, um, it just had this sound. Hang on, I'm just talking to Sam Thompson right now. Anyway, um, I just never seen anything like that. It was like blues, but it wasn't blues. It was like a rock edge to it. And it was funky as, and I was just blown away, man. It was just like it was. I'd never seen anything like this. It, it was it, it, it was incredibly new to me and incredibly dangerous. Not dangerous, but just like fucking crazy. So who are who is this band we just listened to right now? So they're called the Blue Meanies. This used to be called the New Meanies. And you just heard a ding there. Oh, okay. I was going to see if Sam wanted to join me because I thought it would be kind of cool. Um, but anyway, so the new meanies they formed in 1990. Um, Damon Mitchell on sorry about that. Uh, Damon Mitchell on uh, lead vocals, harmonica, Jeff Undub- Undubura on guitar vocals, Guy on Onison on the bass for vocals, keyboards, and Jason Kane on drums. Um, they released the album called the blue meanies which um contains so many great hits and then afterwards on this like i remember when they they i used to watch them in this time and i'm like i was seeing all these artists get signed i think like um uh, Chantel Kabazic was signed and and I was seeing people like Our Lady Peace and we was seeing stuff like I'm Mother Earth and I'm seeing all these bands get signed i'm like where the fuck are these guys not getting signed you know What's what's going on here, man? Um, like why are these guys not getting signed? 
I, I couldn't figure it out. Like, you know, it was driving me nuts. And eventually they get signed. And I'm like, holy shit, this is it. This is the break. Winnipeg is going to get put on the map because there's nobody that rocks like these guys. There's nobody that can get people on a dance floor like these guys. There's nobody with such infectious grooves and amazing versatility in their playing like these guys. Never seen anything like this before. When I was in Montreal, I saw some bands play in Montreal. There was nothing that even came close to this other than the you know, Morgan Dollar, which we are going to do an episode about them at a later point. You guys are fucking awesome. So they get signed to Virgin Records. And it's like, oh my God. Finally, in 1996, multiple years later, again, I moved here in 1990. Saw this man play. I was fucking blown away. Now, this track that we just played was off their third album. So they get signed. They do their Blue Meanies independent release. They find that there's another band called the Blue Meanies. So they, they change their name to the New Meanies when they get signed with the Virgin. They do an album with the Virgin. It's a fucking disaster. Um, there's so much pushing on them to you got to look this way. You got to do this. They had multiple singers in the band. You can't have multiple singers in the band. We need one focal point. They changed everything about what they did and they made it fucking miserable for them to the point that they wanted to get out of the phone track. They released another album afterwards, which this song was from, Sliding Doors, with one of the other singers in the band and they released a great independent release not on a major label. Just goes to show Label, major labels don't know what the fuck they're doing because if they couldn't make this band the biggest band in Canada on the same level as Tragically Hip or one of those, this goes to show labels don't know what the fuck they're doing. Anyway, so that was my introduction to the Winnipeg music scene right there on a band. Not that song. I wanted to play that song because I love the fucking song. So anyway, after, after this, I'm starting to hear some other bands and I'm like, okay, if Winnipeg music scene, if this is, if I lucked out and saw the best band in Winnipeg, is there anything else out there that's any, you know, that's decent? Anything else that's good? So I, I started, you know, I really started hitting the scene, seeing what's here, seeing who's around. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, seeing what else was around and, 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 and listening to other bands. Now, I was familiar with Propagandy, another great band, but they don't fit into what we want to do here at this exact point but um there was another band that was around this time in and around this time that i stumbled upon and then um i bought the cd at i can't remember where it was a split with a another band um I might hit later but anyway we're gonna play them now the band was called painted thin formed in 1993 um they had Stephen carroll in the band they had all for and other bands, other uh, members, including James Ash, Dan McCafferty, and Jason Tate. Jason Tate features prominently in the history of the... Yeah, another band we're going to play a little bit later. But anyway, um, great band. Let's hear what they provide. This song called is called I Hold My Breath. Um, really epitomizes the sound of Winnipeg. Frantic, emo, crazy... We hate our fucking winters here. Here we go. Stitch together, all these scarves into a person, knuckles white around this end of the thread. Emergency enlisted and defended face perpetrators and survivors every day. Back to your bed It's a dance of abuse 
absolutely fucking stunning, absolutely crazy band. Um, you can see why I like this band. And you can also see why I recommended this band to our friends in Blind Commentary. If you listen to the Blind Commentary EP, the four song EP, you will see a lot of similarities to the Winnipeg sound um, doing in the show. And a band like this, fucking phenomenal. Oh my God. So in fucking, in fucking incredible. Another band that popped up around this time. Um, now, I don't know, like, I was trying to see if there was a Wikipedia page for this other band, um, but this was the band that I actually play in the episode, and I found there was such similarity to what they were doing to what this band was doing. And we really needed to point it out. This band has released, uh, let's see, four albums, or I guess it's only three albums. All great. All awesome. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any more information on these guys because this is one of those maths I don't know a lot about. Um, let's see, contact, I cannot contact them. Uh, Instagram page, let's see what they got going on here. Maybe you, you know, there's something interesting here. They broke up in 2006, so I guess there's not a lot of information about them. These guys are awesome. I'm just trying to see if there's any, um, you know, we're going to do something different here. We're actually going to go look at the CD and see the credits. Hang on a sec. That's what happens when you do shit live, man. All right. Now, I apologize. But the glasses are going on. So let's see here. So this album here was released on Endearing Records, which is a fucking great local label. This came out in... It's got SoCan on here. Here we go. We've got Dustin. <laughs> no last names. Um, Dustin on guitars. Chris on guitars. Darren on drums. Jamil on not the guitar and the bass. Produced by Brandon Friesen. Awesome. Studio 21, I believe they're called. All right, well, we're going to play a song from them. I think this is roughly around the same time. I believe this is around the same time that I discovered them. They're really good. And um, again, I feel like, um, I really feel like Blind Commentary has assumed the mantle of this band in some ways uh, in the way they present themselves and the music that they play. Phenomenal shit. I don't even know if you guys are ready for this. Anyway, this song's called Foxfire. It's by the band called Gector. This is off this album here, Red Wolf Glass. And uh, yes, I own physical media because you should too. Support the bands. Don't support them on fucking streaming. Go buy the fucking CD if you can. Support bands by giving them money to keep doing what they're doing. Here we go. This song is called Foxfire. Gector.
And tell me that was an awe inspiring and fucking amazing. I gotta watch my language. Yes, I do. So, other bands around this time that I was discovering was um, there was a band called the Bonaducis. They're in and around the 90s. They were opening for another band, so which I think, I don't know, maybe we should need to get around to. No, you know what? Screw this. We're going to play another band. There's a band that was around this time and they used to play with the meanies all the time. And um, I worked with one of the guys. So I was seeing meanie shows. I was seeing uh, this band open for them called Bliss. They were local. They were great. They got a little bit of radio airplay. And um, they're fantastic. Um, I saw them. I don't know how many times I saw them. I saw them play a shit ton of times. They're phenomenal. They're great. They're an awesome band. Um, um, they they um, they really grooved and 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 played a lot of uh interesting stuff. They had three vocalists in the band, which is awesome. The only one that didn't sing was the drummer. Amazing stuff. Now, I'm going to tell a controversial story here. Is they released the first album. I believe they recorded with Lynn Milne, I believe. Um, maybe I should bring it over here. Again, please buy physical media. This is the band here called Bliss. Uh, Morning, Noon, and Night. It was a concept album that uh, had uh, bits of uh, telling a story. Now, again, three different singers, three different songwriters bring a lot of different stuff into the mix. They had a couple songs that were played on the radio, but I don't want to play one of those songs. I want to play one of the great songs. Um, and this is going to tie us into some other Winnipeg bands that you really need. This song here is called Phases. Very awesome. Take a listen.
So wasn't that a little bit of awesome? That was a lot of awesome. That was a crap of awesome metric Canadian crap. Awesome. Very good stuff. And we're going to play something else. Um, so as, as I mentioned, and I, I, I don't, well, actually, I don't think I mentioned it. So um, Quick History of Bliss, I've seen them a bunch of times. I worked with Ray Offer, the guitar player and one of the vocalists for the band. It was a three- down with three vocalists and they eventually they went from being called bliss um to being changing their name to gin taxi and went in with brandon friesen studio 21 i believe is what it is and recorded their second album um although it's a great it's a great album i think it's pretty good gin taxi nothing is as good as the first album with uh three different vocalists on it and a, a masterpiece so through bliss and through ray um I was able to meet other people, uh, other bands, and and learn about other bands in in town. And one of these bands was called Leader House, which we've done a whole episode on Leader House before. We're going to play one of their songs um, that fe features Matthew Buda, as he was calling himself back then, also known as Matt Budalowski. Um, he fronted this band. He went from this band to Vanderveen, another great, fantastic band, which deserves a whole episode on its own as well as someone else, which we'll play in a second. But here we go. This is the $300 song from Leader House's debut album.
Isn't that something else? Just amazing. Incredible voice, incredible songwriting, incredible artist. Um, uh, Matthew's done quite a bit of things in the Winnipeg scene. Like I said, we're going to be talking about him at length. Uh, Matthew also sang for a band called Volume, and it was the, the replacement singer for the original singer, composer, and songwriter for Volume 1, Lee Philbert, also known as Philatross, and also played in a, in a band called Bucket Hitch. And he had a band in around this time that I discovered, which was Volume. Um, but Bucket Hitch had been around for a bit. And um, Lee's work is like absolutely brilliant, uh, genius, and incredibly tormented. Um, 
I'm delighted that I've got a chance to meet Lee and talk to Lee and have Lee on the show. Um, this is one of his songs called Snowflakes. phenomenal just the feeling of that was just was just so good so amazing so from here i could see um, someone who i became kind of friends with i guess he uh, used to work in a comic shop and he had a band called bonaducci's and i thought wow what a brilliant name for a band absolutely brilliant name for a band and when i heard them they sounded fantastic at that point the bonaducci's were no longer ben and doug leader of the Bonaducci's had gone off in another direction and started another band called the paperbacks. And, um, I saw them. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll see this band instead and go see what they sound like. And, um, they really hit that tone of Winnipeg, uh, quite well. And, um, Doug was getting a lot of notoriety as a songwriter, especially for the Bonaducci's. And, um, but he was also opening for other bands, like weaker than bless me um and um well you know what so they open for the band they open for the band so i'm actually going to play the pamphleteer by the weaker thans which for me is a song that so well encompasses what it's like to be a band in winnipeg trying to get people to your show 
is also an analogy or a metaphor, I guess I should say, to what it's like being troubled and unheard and fading in the background. The song, we're going to play the back to back. So we're going to play Pamphleteer by The Weaker Thens and Books as Furniture by The Paperbacks. And you'll see these two encompass the Winnipeg sound possibly better than any other bands.
How are you? I'm writing you from school. All a sacrifice to get here, and I just wanna talk to you. One month and I still feel so alone. There's still years left to go. Instructed to lean back and think some really cautious thoughts. I collapse into your arms if you would, and as your shirt in tears. But I'm assaulted by the first of years of stresses. There's a melancholiness to the Winnipeg sound. As you've heard in the last two songs, there's a um, inward thinking. Um, just kind of reflecting on things and our long Winnipeg winters and our, you know, crappy falls and, and, and two wet springs and it's a different place to live Winnipeg. And, these songs have this reflection of what it's like to be a Winnipegger. And music seems to be our only salvation at times. But now I want to play something a lot different. This is a artist who was by the name of Spouse Witches. And he wrote a song about somebody previously played. I'm not going to see if you guys can, can make connected thoughts yourselves. The song is called DJ Union. And um, it's a lot of fun. I've got a few tricks from this, and they're very hard to come by. And I'm ready, ready, readily available, but you'll hear it here for the first time. DJ Union by Spouse Patches.
so much fun that was so much fun that was so much fun i want to keep the vibe going and i want to play another local band called 60 stories they're great at one point i think i'm not even sure but i think one of the members of this band auditioned for one of the bands i was in and i was quite excited because i'm like oh my god it's 60 stories 60 stories they're so great they did a split with one of the bands we played earlier called in a thin they're phenomenal they're great they epitomized what we sounded like in Winnipeg at that time. And this is called The Place at the Top of the Stairs. My closet's full Mostly of old clothes Some are too big Some are too small All are embarrassing Books I didn't read Have stiff spines And fill my boxes I wait top of the stairs my pants stained with dirt from years and years of collecting and discarding objects I'm okay but my stomach hurts There's a lot to know Since the last time moved The new bathroom has Beige speckled tiles Like the ones in our Old farmhouse gen I'll go first If you go Top 
phenomenal. Just that band is just so amazing. I'm going to end on two songs. So you're not going to see this ugly image anymore of myself. I'm just going to move on to the last two songs of the set. Of the set of the episode, I think. There was another band around this time that I'd seen live. I can't remember where I saw them. One of the famous venues of the 90s, early 2000s. Um, they were a band called Chains on 20. They were phenomenal. They are great. Bought the CD at the show. Brought it home. Showed my friends. Did an episode about Skelly Willigog some time ago where we discussed some Winnipeg music and some introductions to some great bands. This is the band I introduced him to. We're going to play a song called Bleed by Chains on 20. And we're going to follow that up with something a bit different. A band called HCE from Winnipeg. Phenomenal band. Incredibly heavy. I think we're going to play Bleed first just to um, have a bit of um, bleed between songs and make sure that they bleed in the right way. But anyway, this song is called Bleed by Chains in 20, followed by Chrysanthemum, HCE, HCE, a local band, heavy as
Price is right. <laughs> and yes, folks, you guessed it. 